everyone. So uh, today we are going to do another problem from Codility. And uh, so I've just submitted the solution for this. Uh, so I'll just uh, no, do it again uh, in Visual Studio. Uh, so this problem is called Odd Occurrences in Array, and it's a very simple problem. Uh, so basically what we, are, uh, what we are saying is we would be given with an array of odd number of elements. And uh, so for example, there are like nine elements in the array. So there would be like eight elements which would come in pair, right? So there would be like four pairs uh, having the same elements and there would be like one element in this array which would be uh, unique, right? Which basically would be unpaired. So if you if we see this example, right? So given this particular array, so uh, it has elements like nine, three, nine, three, nine, seven, nine. Uh, correct. So this nine we can pair with this nine. This three we can pair with this three. This nine we can pair with this nine. So this is the only unpaired uh, element in this array, right? So uh, the output of this uh, program that we are going to write should be seven in this particular case. Okay. Uh, so let's quickly see. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this method from last time that we created for cyclic uh, rotation. Uh, in this case, I'll just go back and, and copy this odd occurrences in array. Yeah, we'll call it as odd occurrences in array. So in this case, we have first thing is we have to return an integer, not an integer array. So I'll change this to int and uh, the input to this method is just an array, right? Not it's there's nothing else that we have to pass. All right. So uh, let me just I'll, I'll probably do, do, do. let's let's just remove everything here. Start with a clean slate. All right. So first thing is uh, I'll just quickly validate uh, that. OK, if a dot length. E, uh, sorry, greater than one. Then only we have to find that particular uh, thing. Otherwise, if it's one, it could be one. Right, and in the problem they have mentioned that it's a non-empty array, so we can assume that it's the length would be like at least one. Right, so in case if its length is not greater than one, in that case it should be one. Then what we have to return is the only element in the array. Right, that would be the zeroth element in the array. All right, so this is sorted. Now, in order to calculate the uh, so there's one concept. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a bit wide, bit operator. It's called XOR. This, this is something that we need to understand. Uh, so what happens is, if you if you actually do an XOR, uh, let's just show you the documentation probably. Let's just quickly see XOR truth table. Yeah, so basically XOR means that if both the elements that you're XORing, they are same. So for example, both of them in this case is zero or both of them are like one. In that case, the output would be zero. If they are different, the output would be one. So we can, so I mean this this is like extensively used in uh, solving our data structure and algorithm related problems. So what we would be doing in this case is. Uh, so. Yeah, here. So I would be XORing all the elements of the array, right? What would happen is now this XOR, this XOR becomes zero. This XOR, this XOR becomes zero. This XOR, this XOR becomes zero. And then zero XOR, this thing would actually give us this, this value, right? So the simplest solution to this problem is just XORing all the elements in this array and then return the value after the XORing. Right, uh, so let's create a variable. Let's call it as XOR. Actually created inside because if length is not greater than one, we don't even need to do uh, even declare this variable, right? So int XOR equals to uh, probably I'll say the first element. 
and let's just do a loop. So I equals to uh, zero is fine. So I'll do a dot length I plus plus. I'll actually start with one because XOR already has zeroth element. Right, and then what we can do is XOR equals to uh, XOR and the XOR operator is this operator, uh, right? So XOR of A of I. That's all, that's all we have to do. And what we have to do is once we are done with this, we just, we can just return this XOR element. All right. So let's just uh, call this method. <clears throat> so in unpaired number equals to calling this and we'll pass A. Uh, and this array, let's do one thing. So 256, I'll call it as two. Uh, this I'll say six. So in this case, if we pass this element to this array uh, uh, program method, uh, in this case, it should return five, right? All right, let's, I think it looks okay to me, but let's quickly debug and see what's going on. So it ran for this array and unpaired element is five. Okay, I think seems to be uh, correct. And let's try another thing. Um, let's say we also have it for five. And we will put uh, another seven. In this case, the answer should be seven. Right, hmm. okay. So I think that's all that we had to do to solve this problem. Uh, let's uh, see. Yeah. OK, I think that's that should be all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.